Have you ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix? If so, consider sending it my way. Just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. Also, this is my voice right now, so hopefully it's not too much of a problem. Anyways, enjoy. I recently got into reading about glitches in the Matrix, and from there I found your podcast, and I think that when I was a kid, I actually experienced a glitch myself. Back then it was just weird, but as I was reading about things and listening to people tell these stories, it occurred to me that my, wow, that was kind of weird, moment may have actually been something a lot more than just that. Obviously, when I was a kid, I mentioned this to my parents, but they just chalked it up to me being a creative child, and having an overactive imagination, and of course they dismissed me. Anyways, when this happened, I was in the sixth grade, so it was a pretty long time ago. I don't want to put my age out there and feel old, so... I'll just say that it was well over a decade ago, and leave it there. At my elementary school, we had two classrooms for the 6th graders. There was Mr. Andrew's class, which was my class, and then there was Ms. Kelly's classroom. Each class had around 20 or so kids in it, and being in 6th grade, and at the end of our elementary school journey, they were putting us through some pretty interesting subjects and teaching us a lot about the world. One of these subjects was world culture. I actually remember the classes pretty well, and they were some of the most interesting classes that we got to do. So, to explain the basics of what the lessons were, Mr. Andrew's class got to learn about Japan and Russia, but what was most fun was that when we finished the lesson about Japan, we got to switch classes with Miss Kelly's room, and she taught us about Australia and China. So, we learned about Japan in our normal room, and then moved to Kelly's class to learn about Australia. Then we went back to our normal room to learn about Russia, and then back to Kelly's for the lesson about China. It was really fun and it was super cool to take the week in another classroom. Being a kid, it was just fun to spend a week in another teacher's room, I guess. And during the Australian lesson was when my glitch actually happened. During the week of the Australia lesson, I repeated a day. I know that sounds really uninformative, but there was a day during that week where we learned about the wildlife of Australia. I loved the lessons, and obviously we learned about kangaroos, as stereotypical as that sounds. I love kangaroos. To me, they are one of the coolest animals out there. We talked about them, spiders, birds, and tons of other things that lived in Australia. During the lesson, Miss Kelly would pause and ask random questions to see if we knew the answer like little pop quiz type questions. I didn't know anything about Australia prior to the lesson, beyond that kangaroos lived there, and I learned that from our local zoo. So, we got through the lesson, and I learned a lot during that day. But then, the next day when I got to school, when we got to Miss Kelly's room, she started teaching us about the animals again. It was the exact same lesson as the day prior, from literally the first part of the lesson about kangaroos to the insects and the birds. It was really weird because I knew every single thing that she was going to say, and I answered every single question that she had correctly. It got to the point where she actually asked me if I had learned about Australia in the past, and I couldn't answer her. I wanted to say, yeah, you told us about all of this yesterday, but for some reason, I couldn't. I literally could not tell her 
that this day was a repeat of the day prior. It was so bizarre how this had repeated, and I just could not tell her anything about it. I sort of nodded and smiled and kept going with the lesson, basically telling her about what she was teaching us. When I got home, like I mentioned, I told my parents about it, but they just kind of laughed at me and told me that I was just imagining the whole thing. What was weird is, I'm not sure if I had physically relived the day, and we spent six days in class that week, or if it was just in my head that I relived it. But I definitely recall the entire lesson happening twice, and me knowing every single thing that she was saying. It was super weird for me, and I have no explanation for it. Hopefully, people will find this entertaining, if nothing else, because, to me, it was just awkward as hell. If anyone has ever had anything like this happen to them, I would love to hear it, and hopefully they'll send it your way, because this event was the strangest thing that I have ever experienced. For some background, my best friend, Jay, and I lived together about three or four years, maybe. We're basically brothers. We lived across the street from each other since we were born. We joke around a lot, talk smack, prank each other. But there are times that we are serious, and we never lie to each other outside of jokes or pranks. This was definitely not a prank or a joke because it would make no sense, and it wouldn't be funny. And to be honest, it would be quite difficult to pull off for no payoff. So, we're living in a typical suburban house in California, north of the Bay Area. There's nothing strange about the house or area. I have the master, and he lives in the front room of the house, which means that he uses the guest bathroom and has to walk to it from his room. It's a weekend mid-morning, and he's getting ready to head to his shop, and I'm walking out of my room, meandering down the hallway towards his bathroom, about 20 feet, and we're just talking while he's putting his shoes on. He goes to put his left shoe on, but has to hang on to something because he has a big gut. He reached up with his left hand and grabs the towel rod, it's a cheap metal pole, and is trying to put his left shoe on leaning forward. He yanks too hard on the pole a few times, and his left shoulder hits the edge of the open door and falls to the ground. I don't remember if I heard the pole hit the ground or anything like that. I was focused on him, and he was just half yelling and moaning, Ah, dude, what the hell? Piece of crap towel rack, this house sucks. Etc. He slowly picks himself up off the floor, and after I get done laughing and making fun of him, he's looking around for the towel rod that he yanked off the wall. I see him slowly getting more and more confused every second. Finally, I ask him if he's going to fix it, and he says, Yeah, dude, but I don't know where the rod is. I'm kind of in disbelief at how stupid he is. And I say it's behind the door, man. What are you talking about? Mind you, I was watching him the whole time. All he did was get up between his fall and his search. He invites me to look, and it's a tiny bathroom with nothing in it. He basically treated the house like a hotel, so all he had was a towel and a toothbrush, plus other minor things in the cabinets. I take a look and all I see is the floor vent behind the door, and nothing else. The rod was gone. Vanished. There were no cracks, no holes. I tried to lift the vent cover up, but it was sealed to the flooring, and the duct was too small and turned too soon for a rod to fall in. Still, he opened the cabinets, looked in the tub, checked places that made no sense simply because what had just occurred made no sense. Like normal people, we just shrugged it off and 
chucked it up as being one of those times when you drop a small screw or something and you just never find it again, or it turns up in the vacuum. But I still think about it to this day and cannot explain what happened to this three-foot metal rod that seemed to have just stopped existing. I know I made this post long, but I feel like it's important for the readers to understand how impossible it would have been for this thing to just disappear. Not to mention, I experienced it with my buddy, so I know that I am not crazy. As a side note, we weren't under any influences, no drugs, no alcohol, and not tired. I've had similar experiences before. Objects as large as a key or a pencil falling onto wood laminate flooring in empty rooms with nowhere to go bouncing just out of sight, hearing them settle, and then never finding them. This happened yesterday and I'm still feeling extremely confused as nothing like this has happened to me before. These days, I rarely take public transport, but I had a customer meeting at City Center that is more convenient to get there by commuter train than trying to find a parking spot with a car. So, after the meeting was over, I was taking the train back. Just a side note, previously... I didn't have a car at all, so I know all of the stations on the line very well. For the story, I named the stations just as A, B, and C. C is my alighting station, A and B are the preceding stations. I was sitting next to two women, and the train had stopped at station A. They said to each other that the next station would be station B, and that would be their stop. I was thinking that it's a really cool station. It's a tunnel with some nice wall murals. It's the only tunnel station on the line, so it's easy to recognize. So, we continue in to B station, and the two women as well as a bunch of other people get off, and some new people enter the train car. The train leaves towards station C, and I know it takes about five minutes until that station, so I'm just waiting for my station not paying much attention to anything. Until the PA system of the train announces that the next stop is Station B. I check the next station screen on the end of the train corridor, and it also reads Station B. And first, I thought that the PA system was malfunctioning, but when I look out the window, we are actually approaching Station B, and we're definitely moving forward, not reversing. I'm really confused at this point, and I see that there is another man sitting adjacent to me, also looking very puzzled as well. The train stops at Station B, and again, some people get on and some get off the train. No, the two women had not respond or anything, and as far as I can tell, no other passengers near me had changed since we left Station B the first time. The next leg, to Station C, goes without incident. And when I'm getting off, I can see the other man is looking still very confused. After I got home, I tried to make sense of it, but I can't. I have so many questions. One thing I remarked when I left for the meeting in the morning was that all of the trains going to the city center were about five minutes late. So, had this been happening already then? And why did some people get off on the second time we arrived at the station? Why didn't they get off on the first time? And since at least one other passenger noticed something weird happening, it wasn't just me. How many others noticed or were affected? Many were fixed on their phones, so maybe they didn't even pay attention to what happened. I have a weird experience that may have been a glitch, or it may have been me losing my mind and my brain causing me to hallucinate, 
Though I'm medically fine and I'm not on anything that would cause hallucinations or anything like that, so I'm not sure that that's what happened. In my house, we have a set of chores for our two kids that they are expected to do after they finish their schoolwork. We don't just make them do all the work. We have our own names on the chore list and we rotate things accordingly. So, all of the housework is split out fairly and evenly. My kids are both teenagers, so I guess part of me just thought that having a structure in our home for the work, and including ourselves in it, would show that we as a family all work together to get things done. So far, it's worked. They've been decently receptive to the idea, and I think it helps to demonstrate that we're all in this together. This week, it was my son, Danny's, turn to do the dishes in the evening. We have a dishwasher, and we run it every two days, sometimes three, depending on how many dishes we use and how long it takes to fill it. But we also sometimes hand wash small things like forks or cups as well, just because it's quicker to wash and dry them and put them away for reuse. On this night in particular, I was kneading a spoon so that I could stir my tea. I opened the drawer to get one, and when I did, I noticed that the utensil drawer was rather empty, much to my disappointment. I grabbed my spoon, walked over to the dishwasher and opened it, and, as I anticipated, it was full. Like, completely full to the maximum capacity, including a number of utensils. Just to be sure, I pulled one of the plates from the rack and looked at it, and it was definitely dirty. This was really upsetting to me, as my son has been better about doing his chores than even myself. He was always on top of them, and he'd been pretty good about getting everything done when necessary, so to have him slacking was, like I said, upsetting. I went up to his room and I knocked on his door to ask them about them. I mentioned that it was his week to do the dishes, and he just said, yeah. I then mentioned that that included the dishwasher, and he once again agreed. He seemed confused as to why I was mentioning all this, and I basically just said, the dishwasher is packed full, Danny. Why didn't you run it? He just kind of stared at me confused and then said, I did. I ran it and emptied it when I got home from school this afternoon. I told him that it was packed full and that the dishes were dirty so that there was no way he could have run it. I then told him to come with me so we could check. He got up and went down to the kitchen. I opened the dishwasher to show him that it was still full, and, much to my surprise, it was completely empty. I did a double take and then a triple take to make sure that I wasn't about to pass out. That dishwasher was full just a few moments earlier, when I looked. It was full to the brim, and the dishes were all dirty. Yet, now, when I was trying to talk to my son about how he didn't do his chores, and when I told him that it was full, it wasn't. I had no idea what to say or do in this situation, He was obviously expecting me to say something about the fact that I had pretty much lied to him about this whole situation. I obviously had to just accept that I was losing my mind, and I apologized to him. I told him that I was obviously going crazy because he had definitely done what he was asked to, and I thanked him for being so diligent. He accepted the apology slash gratitude and went back up to his room to do whatever he was doing. As soon as he walked away, I checked the dishwasher again. Then, I checked the utensil drawer, and it was full. I then went over to the plates and checked those, and they were all there, including the one that I swear I pulled out to look at. I have no idea how this all happened. Either my son is able to manipulate the Matrix to do what he wants it to, or I am seriously losing my mind. I guess another possibility is that I was in a timeline where he didn't do the dishes, 
And somehow, as I was climbing up the stairs, I ended up in one where he did. I will say, though, if this was me shifting timelines, this was an incredibly boring cause for me to shift. So, this story is about 20 years old now. I'm 40, and was 20 at the time. I remember it very clearly, as does my mother. We were on a trip from Utah to California, passing in to San Diego. The trip has an overpass that we pass under, and we have made this trip a thousand times over the course of my life. We always use that overpass to signify the start or end of the trip, depending on which way we are going. So, this trip had been... grueling. We had a lot of car trouble, and had been harassed by the California border, because they caught us with ferrets once a few years earlier, so they regularly demand to search our car in case we were smuggling wild animals. With that in mind, we were ready to get home. It was hitting sunset as we approached the city. We passed under the landmark overpass and my mom sighed and said, We're home. And I cheered and we went back to listening to music. It usually took about 45 minutes from the overpass to get to our doorstep. After roughly half an hour of driving, we both started getting really confused. We were passing under freeways that we would not normally pass under. I started looking around to see if we missed something, when my mom said, what is that? And I saw something to this day that makes my head dizzy when I think too hard about it. The buildings around us were crumbling and the freeways over us had like vines and stuff hanging from them. I audibly gasped and my mom just started saying, what the f- what the hell? What the f- Then, it was dark, and we were on the freeway, and we were passing under the overpass. Except we were going the wrong way, heading out of the city instead of coming in. My mom freaked out. We pulled over and started freaking out. I couldn't even think clearly. We were both just unable to cope with what we had just seen, or where we were. We realized we were missing a couple of hours, and she eventually just said that it was a shared hallucination, and that she had been driving in a daze because of the long day. To this day, we cannot explain what we saw or justify how we ended up on the freeway heading out of the city. I recently brought it up to my mother, and she got really quiet and said that she remembered. She told me what she remembered, which matched my memories, and wouldn't talk about it further. She refused to speculate or discuss it any further than the cold hard fact of, this happened, this is what happened, and that's it. It was probably the craziest glitch I've ever seen. I just thought I would share it. Take it as you will. Or don't. It doesn't matter to me. My wife and I frequently go to a nearby National Wildlife Refuge, where we walk our dogs. As we were driving, we saw an animal run across the road about 10 feet in front of us. We were going pretty slow because it's common to see wildlife along the road. I expected it to be a bird as there are pheasants and grouse in the area, but when I looked at its head, it didn't have a beak. It was smooth and rounded at the mouth. I looked over its body, but I didn't see any feathers. I looked at its tail because that would be a dead giveaway but there were no feathers and the tail tapered to a tip. The tail was about as long as the rest of its body, and it ran with its head in line with its tail. 
I didn't see any indication of wings along its body. It then ran into some tall grass. I didn't say anything because I had to have seen that wrong, right? But then my wife said something along the lines of, Did you see what I think I just saw? And I responded, Was that a small dinosaur? We described it back and forth to each other. We both agreed it was a darkish brown color. She immediately noticed the lack of feathers, but she also said that she saw no wings, and that it had little arms bent in front of its body. It was maybe two feet long. We both are knowledgeable when it comes to wild animals and species identification, as it is a hobby of ours, and one of the reasons we frequent the refuge. I've had an intense interest of animals ever since I was a small child, and I cannot explain what we saw. Every time we drive in that spot, I remember vividly what I saw. We both agree that if the other hadn't been there, then we would have thought we were going insane. I think to some degree I think I must have because there's no logical explanation that I can come up with. I've looked at so many photos of various birds and lizard species, and there's just no way. I've tried to convince myself that I saw something else, but there's nothing that comes close enough. If anyone else has had a similar experience, I would love to know. The only thing that we can come up with is that there was a glitch in the timeline, and I guess that somehow a species of dinosaur survived mass extinction and has remained unchanged and undetected until now, which sounds even more unlikely than a glitch. Edit. This post received more engagement than I was expecting, so I'll try to answer questions the best I can. First off, yes, I am aware that it's most likely that particularly small dinosaurs had feathers, but that isn't what I saw and I'm not going to give an inaccurate report to make it sound more believable. I was aware of the dinosaur feather situation well before I saw this creature. It doesn't change what I slash we saw. I didn't post this looking to solve the answer of what I saw. I don't think there is any explanation we can get, except maybe once we die, if you believe in that sort of thing. And this was at least two years ago. I stumbled upon this subreddit yesterday, and I thought, hmm, maybe my dinosaur sighting fits here, and I thought that maybe some people would be intrigued. Let me tell you a little story about hoses and vacuums. I know, it sounds boring. At first, some background. I'm a stay-at-home mom to five kids. I do all the budgeting, planning, shopping, cleaning, essentially managing the house. Nothing happens in the house that I don't oversee. During 2020, when all the kids were home during lockdowns, I took it as a special project to make our grass as healthy as possible and to raise a garden. Since we were spending so much time at home, Soft green grass was very important. I watered it twice a day by hand. One thing is that I have a very large yard. It's about three quarters of an acre, and I have very long hoses that I have repaired multiple times with wire braces and duct tape. My hoses would stretch until I felt like I was going to rip them out of the wall, but still, the water would fall about ten feet too short even when I was spraying with as much pressure as I could. Both the front and backyards needed to have watering cans to do the last little bit. Now, let me tell you about my vacuum. It's pretty much the same. It would reach everywhere in the house except for one little corner. Boring. But one day, a week ago, all three would reach. The hose easily hits the back wall with space to spare. All the duct tape and corrections that I've made to the hose are still there. 
The front yard can spray way past the edge and into the street. The vacuum hits the corner. All three are long enough at the exact same time. Also, I noticed this on a Tuesday. My son was asking to go to confession, or Catholic, and so I told him that it would not be a problem. Confession would be at 11 a.m. It has been on Tuesday at 11 a.m. every single week for many years. When I said this, my husband turned and looked at me confused. He said, Confession's never on Tuesday. I told him not to be ridiculous, because I'm in charge of the scheduling and this is something I know like the back of my hand. We've gone as a full family once a month on Tuesdays. I looked at the calendar, and not only was confession not on Tuesdays, it wasn't written down at all. It has always been written down. I looked it up online. It's on Saturdays at 4 p.m. Previous handouts from church say Saturdays at 4. Four changes at the exact same time. Editing to add, while I am the only person who remembers the confession appointment, everyone else remembers the hoses and vacuums not being quite long enough. This happened about one and a half years ago. I came home and sat on my couch to watch a little television before bed. I took off my smartwatch and set it on the arm of the couch, and then went back to watching TV while taking off my earrings. I held my earrings in my hand for a few minutes, and decided to get up and take my items to my room. When I reached for my watch, it wasn't there. Naturally, I looked on the floor, and then felt in the cushion right next to me. Nothing. I got on the floor and looked under the couch and coffee table and again came up empty. I pinged my watch from my phone, and I heard it inside the couch. I continue pinging my watch, and it sounds like it's underneath the cushion next to where I was sitting. Weird. As I went to remove the cushion... This was precisely the moment I realized the cushions were stitched to the couch and unable to be removed. It was a new couch at the time. I'm now lying on the floor between my couch and coffee table, reaching under my couch. I could feel my watch resting above the lining that is attached to the bottom, and I have no idea how it got there. Under the middle cushion, no less. I reach between the middle cushion and the back of the couch as well as the left cushion and the arm looking for a hole that it could have slipped through. I do find one on the left side, but I don't understand how it slid just right, went into the hole, and then had enough momentum to slide to the center of the couch, all without me noticing. One minute later, I'm cutting a hole in the lining under my couch to retrieve my watch, and I still have no idea how it got there. This is kind of a silly story that needs a bit of context. Last weekend, I hosted a cookout for my mom's birthday. A friend of mine brought over a 12-count variety pack of ranch water, which includes three cans of each flavor. For the record, and breaking character from this narration, ranch water is not ranch dressing and water like I thought it was, it is tequila with seltzer water. At the end of the day, there was a handful of loose drinks left, a few beers and seltzers, including one can of spicy ranch water. I especially took note because it's my partner's favorite flavor, so I left it in there for them. And... To confirm this, a few days after the party, my partner points out the spicy ranch water in the fridge and asked if I had saved it for them, to which I confirmed yes, I saved it for them. I don't particularly like the spicy flavor. I prefer an original or lime with chamoy. During the week, I had one of the beers. 
it was a local IPA with very distinct packaging and flavor. Cut to this weekend, me and my partner go out of town. My brother agreed to watch my dogs, so I picked up a six-pack for him when I dropped my pups off. We returned and went to go pick them up. My brother hands me an original flavor ranch water, same brand, to take home with me. It's very typical for me and my brother to gift each other a single beer or bit of weed or whatever whenever we see each other. I placed the ranch water in the bag that I had the dog stuff, food, treats, etc. Now I'm home, and my partner went home as well, but was coming back to stay the night. I'm putting things, snacks from our trip, away in the fridge, and I notice an original ranch water in the fridge. So, I think to myself, maybe my partner put it in there and took the spicy one to their house. Makes sense. It seemed the cans literally swapped places in the fridge. Then, I find the original ranch water my brother gave me in the bag with all the dog stuff. I go to put it in the fridge, and now there are two originals with no spicy. I was weirded out initially. There was no other ranch water, aside from the spicy beforehand. My partner comes back and I ask them. No, they didn't exchange it, nor did they grab it. I'm tripped up. I'm currently drinking the ranch water my brother gave me and the other was still in the fridge. Sans spicy. I'm still so confused by this. I'm generally pretty aware of what is in my home and fridge, and my partner isn't the type to just take things without giving me a heads up. Plus, they were in my home for just a few minutes, helping me bring things in from the trip. This also doesn't explain the extra original. But anyways, thanks for reading. So, that's my friendarinos. Was this week's glitch in the Matrix Collection, well, kind of, it was a glitch in the Matrix Collection that happened during this week. You'll understand what I mean by that later. Anyways, um, this is my voice now, right now, for the moment at least. Uh, hopefully, like I said earlier in the intro, it's not that big of a deal to you. To me, it sucks terribly. Um, I hate it. I hate my voice right now, I wish I was back to 100%, but as we all know, this crap does not let up quickly, or easily. And I am just ecstatic at the fact that I'm feeling so much better. The congestion, the coughing, the lightheadedness to some extent is not letting up very well. The sinus pressure really sucks, um, but I mean, beyond that, like everything else is perfect. It's just this lingering BS that I'm still dealing with, so I apologize for that, guys. But hey, we're back. We're back, and it feels so good to be back. It does. It feels so good to be doing this again. It felt so weird to not be making content for you guys, you know? It just felt awkward. I felt kind of empty, so I'm happy to be here. Anyways, if you enjoyed this collection, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard... um. This is not my normal voice, so I'm sorry. But anyways, consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you uh, would be so bold and want to support the channel further, you can join, hit thanks, or go to my Patreon, where for a dollar a month you can get early access to content like this. Never ever expected. Always, always appreciated. Now, let's move on to the word of the week. There's been plenty of time, so I'm going to put on the screen right now, in a few seconds before now, all of the comments that I got with the word of the week and probably some that didn't have the word of the week because I feel like it's just been a weird and awkward time and I should just include probably every comment that I got in the last video. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but on the screen is an indicator of what I chose because it's the comments that are on the screen right now, right? That's how that works. Anyways, yeah, a huge thank you to everybody. Full stop. That's just where it ends. A huge thank you to everybody. Anyways, let's move on to this week's word of the week. We are starting over at the beginning of the alphabet. So this week, the word of the week is abnormal. 
A B N O R M A L. It is an adjective deviating from the normal or average or unusual in an unwelcome or problematic way. It's not always unusual in an unwelcome or problematic way. It can just be unusual, right? Something can absolutely be abnormal and it'd be a positive. Like, if you have a coworker who shows up to work one day with a box of donuts, well, and they've never done that before, it could be considered abnormal, but it's a good thing, because now you have donuts. I'm going to stop this outro. I hope you all have a beautiful day. I hope I do see you on the next video. But of course, until then, my beautiful, beautiful friends, please sleep well.